So thanks, Moti, for this insight into the art of sausage making. Um, questions? So there are two people here who can uh, come to you with the microphone. Just put your hands up. Thank you, Dr. Asokan, for having such an uh, incredible speaker on cryptography. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Young, in your presentation, you said there's no need to extract real randomness. And in your presentation, you have the unique context in parentheses in the seed. Could you elaborate a little bit Is on that kindly? So the, the, the encryption is not based on, on uh, randomness. Of course, you need randomness. Without randomness, you don't have uh, secure encryption. So you have, a, you have a random key as a seed. And this is used as a seed to a pseudo-random function with extra fields. And you don't need any more randomness in, in real time. That's the property of pseudo-randomness. Uh, uh, pseudo-randomness take a random key, deterministic values, and generate something that still looks pseudo-random. And the fact that in real time you don't have to extract randomness in your system is a big win on the on performance. Because if you if you need uh, if you need 100 bits of randomness. Uh, 10 billion times, it's a lot of crunching compared to if you need only 1,000 keys or 2,000 keys per day. Other questions? So put your hands up so that we can see in advance. Paul, anybody else who want to ask questions, put your hands up. Modi, you, um, you had the, the range of skills you needed here went from understanding you know, the, the, the crypto theory, authenticating encryption, all the way to you know, figuring out how the cloud works and, and, and addressing all this. From that, I mean, if we say we want the crypto slash security people to, to learn sufficient things to go out into industry to work, what, what do we teach them and what can they learn in their job versus what can't they learn? What would you have needed before you started this? Uh, before I did my PhD, I, w I went to industry for. What should we teach? What should we teach? Help them? Which aspects? All Even though you, you, you do cryptography, you should learn about system design. You should learn about certain systems. There are, there are things that you will never learn in a university. I don't think uh, I don't think that uh, re uh, concrete data analysis on big data, or big cloud computing, or 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 or, uh, or uh, uh, certain design aspects are, are re you really have to do in in, in industry. Uh, you know that uh, some faculty we have. Ideas and 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 they start a startup company, for example, just because they want to understand whether the technology really works in the real. But in the process, you learn you 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 learn all this. Learning a little bit about business is also useful. Not too much, but just the basics. If you learn too much, you become a politician. Internships help too. Internships should help, yes. Any other questions? But uh, but we don't we don't we don't have a, we don't have product man for you know product management and big engineering projects. The way they are taught in software engineering course are really not enough in industry. It's a bit different, and there are there are there are fields in in computer science. These days, like academia doesn't have the data, academia doesn't have the productization, you cannot learn the business, you cannot really learn, but uh, but you have, you, you, you should learn systems a little bit more. Question over there? Yeah. Mm. So uh, you had in your slides something like this that 
adopting applied cryptography for large and real-world systems should be an opportunistic way. And my impression was that you don't you also don't buy this nice uh, sayings like privacy by design or pri or security by design, and then you have these examples that. Uh, for large, large, uh, for large real world systems like this, um, security for emails and and also the IBM example, but um, so yeah. So I don't know if you if you can recall an example for in a, for for a small medium enterprise or system, and that uh, they applied the crypto in an opportunistic way, not by privacy by design or privacy, privacy or security by design. No, opportunistic doesn't go against security by design. Opportunistic means uh, use a design opportunity to design for a uh, foreseeable future. So when it was designed, when the system was designed for web, when the system was designed for web, somebody has to think, and that was just the early days of the mobile ecosystem, what would be ads for mobile devices? You will need to transfer information from mobile to the cloud, and from the cloud to the agencies. So there should, the, the plugs were put in for this. But it was not security by design because there was no design for it. There was no design. So there, it cannot be by design. When, when, when suddenly the extension design came, I did not need to design the crypto because I had it already inside. And that's the opportunistic part. I hope this makes it clear. That you have to be a little bit ahead of time, if you can. And uh, hopefully everybody in his area does the same, essentially the same thing. If you have an, an extension of the design, if you don't build on, on, your, on, your, on, your, on your past design, if you don't have the right hooks for extensions, it's going to, be, it's going to take a long time. And I think this is a mistake, that things move and they don't move. And the good, in, good engineers know that systems evolve. Systems are elastic, and then you have to do it. And this is peop these people know. I mean, people know about it. I mean, good engineers, they always design with some env envisioning the future. What I want to, s to say is that crypto and security as, as, a, as, a mechani as mechanisms that follow the design, as a, as a secondary, it's a very important factor, but secondary, not in the function of the system, but as a support. You have to be even more opportunistic because nobody wants to pay for it on the business plan. But you put it there and you don't say anything. Time will tell. So that uh, leads me to sort of a question that I wanted to ask. So I think uh, all of us who have done research and dealt with uh, product units uh, recognize this importance of addressing pain points and building credibility, right? But you also want to put in this clairvoyant uh, you know, design for the future, but you can't get those in with their agreement because they don't have the same clarifiance that you have. And you said something like you can sneak these in, right? So, so there was how no does that deal with... No, the but, the, but my sneak in was to put a field that was called uh, purpose or action. They but didn't does that care. Harm the they didn't care. It was another constant in the, in the, from their point of view. It was uh, uh, put, pro processing this... Uh, this uh, age mac like uh, pseudo random function uh, iterated on, a, on another constant in. Oh, why, do, why should they care? So I told they, them, put it, put it. <laughs> when they finally found out the real purpose for the. When they, when they came to me and say, oh, we need backwards compatibility, I said, you are talking to me like I, I graduated yesterday. You have forward compatibility. <laughs> Anyone else who want to ask the. One last question. I mean, this is a classical example. That is nothing. Nothing. You add nothing, and you gain a lot. Free lunch. If not, let's thank Moti again. Thank you. Thank you very much.